it's not the best time to face the 49ers as they're getting better <laughs> right now and it's a going to be an interesting game George what are your uh, like you know first initial thoughts nervous worried nervous scared a lot a lot of nerves uh they're a good football team yes and the are. Seahawks have been obviously losing a lot of games uh five out of six so let's hope they can find a way to just you know put together a full game and make it worthwhile because George as you know if you lose these next two seasons basically over in terms of trying to make the playoffs Yes, uh, you cannot, especially against divisional opponents, these are two games we must at least split to have a good feeling. Yeah, at least, at the minimum, and then hopefully go beat the Jets. That that would be the, the main goal right after that. Split, beat the Jets, we'd still have a chance, which is not too bad. And let's start the show. You're listening to the Sports on Tap Seattle podcast. I'm Sammy, and with me as always is my older brother, George. Your favorite place to be a fan of Seattle sports. Now let's get this party started. Seattle Seahawks, after a bye week, finally play some more division games and have a chance to find their way back up the standings in the NFC West. How are you feeling? It's uh, going to be a interesting one. Yeah, I mean, if it's anything like the Seahawks season's been so far, it's going to be the unexpected. I didn't expect us to start 3-0. I didn't expect us to beat the Falcons. I expected us to beat the Rams. I expected us to beat the Giants. I expect us to lose this game to the 49ers. Um, so maybe my the season of it, unexpected results continues for me, and the Seahawks shock me and shock, I wouldn't say shock the world. This is not a... The miracle on ice, Russia versus the United States in the Olympic hockey. But in general, like, you know, shock a couple of people. Everyone's separated by one game in the NFC West. So, yeah, yeah it's, exactly. It's not like the <laughs> world the is Chiefs. shocked. Yeah, well, not even the cheat. Like, it's just not, it's not like the miracle in the, in the world, but it would be a surprising result if the Seahawks were to win this game. Yeah, I would say it'd be surprising, but, you know, not like you said, not a shock. At the end of the day, the unexpected hat keeps happening with the Seahawks. Like you said, like, you know, you go to Atlanta and win that game and then you, you lose to the giants and you, you look awful against the bills and then you kind of blow it against the Rams. There hasn't been much consistency, which we've talked about a lot this, this year. And, and it's just been a lack of consistency, a lack of the same thing happening, but a lot of injuries play a role into that. And that's something I wanted to first bring up because to me, one of the most important key points of this game is the fact that, Looks like we're trending towards having Abe Lucas back, which is really big when you have a great right tackle and a great left tackle. And mm -hmm. we're trending towards having somebody like DK Metcalf back. If, if you know, things start to be more towards what we think they're going to be, there could be a much different result than we thought. But you never know. Or it makes no difference and we lose. But I'm just saying those are obviously key positives that, you know, some of the key players on our team are actually trending towards being healthy. Yeah, and coming off a of bye week too, that which is helpful. I mean, that's part of the trend of getting healthy. A bye week gives you an opportunity to heal, like mentally too, because we are Seahawks fans need some mental help here. And as far as you're right, um, getting some key pieces back. Now, I wouldn't, Lucas uh, calling him great to me was a little bit of a stretch. He's a very he's a good right tackle in the NFL, and but you know what. I'm going to give you credit here on something. He's going to look great compared to what we had going up on the right side of our offensive line. Well, he, he was a high level right tackle. I mean, when I say great, I don't mean superstar. I don't mean elite. Those are, I think those are the, I think the word great is more like he would be a starter when he's healthy on yes, the majority absolutely. of NFL teams. That's what I mean by great is that Charles cross on left talk tackle is great. He's been like a top five to 10, um, but we have two good or great, whatever you want to call mm -hmm. it, a right tackle and a left tackle. And to your point, it's been abysmal to this point, yeah. like the, the offensive line. So any upgrade, even, you know, when it was George Fant being healthy, any upgrade is better than not having them. So, you know, it's going to be interesting. You brought up the bye week and something we didn't talk about, um, you know, some personal stuff here is that obviously – I am getting married in a week and it's been very busy. We didn't end up doing a, a podcast after the release of uh, Terrell Dotson. The bye week 
it was there's a lot that happened for the Seahawks during the bye week. I mean, A. Luke is coming back, DK Metcalf potentially coming back, and releasing our starting linebacker, who was our middle linebacker for you know five or six weeks. They literally were a team that ended up being you know in a situation where you know they they started with Jerome Baker and with Terrell Dotson, traded Baker for Ernest Ernest Jones, and now released. Dotson, like that's a weird way to start your year for a team like this after getting rid of Brooks and Wagner over the offseason. Yeah, I mean, God, you're like that's like what four linebacker changes. <laughs> yeah, and that's like pretty a, insane. In a twenty game, game span, right? I guess what seventeen games last year, and then how many this year so far? Like seven or eight. Like in a in a twenty five game span, we have like shifted through f- like four main line, six main linebackers. Now we have two new ones. You know what's funny? Uh, John Schneider is like playing fantasy football with linebackers. <laughs> yeah, actually, though, and I, I think it's I think it's more a Mike McDonald thing. I think he's I, I, I think so too. He's not satisfied. And Dotson, I think that whole thing was he got demoted. I think Knight got the starting job, and I think he threw a fuss. And then you're like. I'm not saying he asked to be released, but he threw a fuss. And then Mike McDonald's like, you know what? I don't need anyone throwing a fuss on my team and I'm getting rid of you. And that just goes back to the whole Mike McDonald thing. Here's the thing with me and those like hard nosed coaches that, no, you don't throw a fuss. Wait, before often. you get, before you get to that point, there's also a potential chance that it was, he's getting demoted and they talked about it. Do you want to be a, coming off the bench or released and he said released there's also that chance too there is that's that very chance. High chance. it's but a continue. chance yeah i was gonna say there's something about those hard-nosed coaches when um okay i i'm not saying this is not gonna work right but i'm saying with a hard-nosed coach do you see some of them when they're hard-nosed it works splendidly like they set their precedent but if things go bad the locker room starts not liking that hard-nosed coach so yeah, you got to really, 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 and I, I rather have a hard nosed coach because once it starts working good, it's better than having a loose coach. And I just hope that this is, if this is the case, I just hope that the players are like, all right, yeah, cool, we give this rookie a chance. It's like go and play really good football, and now, like, oh, they, they cut uh, Dotson. I'm sure Dotson was liked in the locker room. I don't think there was a problem there or anything like that. He was leading our team in tackles. So I just hope it's like one of those things where the team is like, yeah, that's just how we do business rather than like, oh, I can't believe they cut dots. You know what I mean? Like, I just hope that's how the team takes it because that's how probably they should take it. Yeah. I mean, the, the biggest issue here is that I don't, I feel like the, oh, dots and through a fuss, fuss was a assumption. It's an assumption. And like, yeah. and, and it's not just from you. There's been, I, I assume the same thing. And I think a lot of people on, on X or Twitter, we're talking about that too, where it's either he got demoted and threw a fuss about it, or he got, or both, they both mutually talked about it, like, this isn't working for us, or he got demoted and they were like, what do you want? Like, are you gonna, are you gonna be cool as a backup? I mean, he's like, I'd prefer to be released. All those are options, but it is, to your point, hard with these hard notes coaches. I feel like, um, there's a good mix between being a hard nosed coach, but having some like, more emotion in a good way. Like I think one thing we've talked about a lot is Mike McDonald, not showing any emotion, right? Right. Which is he's kind of only showed the, I don't play games. I'm a hard nosed coach, which is a very defensive coach, like hard nosed guy mentality. But I think it's good. I hope there are some behind the scenes that we don't see at least some of the looseness. And I think a really good example of that is a guy like Jim Harbaugh. I know I was going to just say Harbaugh that. Jim Harbaugh completely nice changed his personality. And I know he already, let's not act like he wasn't succeeding in San Francisco because he did, but they, I know they never won the Super Bowl, but it was working. But everyone saw him as like this bland, angry Jim Harbaugh. He goes to Michigan, kind of loosens up, goes back to his alma mater, wins a championship, comes to the Chargers, and he's now like, He's still Jim Harbaugh probably like with a lot of situations, but you see this other, like I'm going to attack today with unseen to a humankind enthusiasm and Mm -hmm. making jokes and kind of being, be yourself a little bit outside of just the hard nosed guy. And I don't know if Mike McDonald has that yet. And I don't blame him because he's in his thirties, his first head coaching job. He's probably tense as hell because, you know, they started three and oh, and now they've lost four out of five or five out of six. And he's like, 
just tense, right? Trying to figure out, right. I don't want to make this a disaster of a season after a 3-0 and start. And he did learn under Harbaugh. Let's not forget that. He was the assistant coach. Both Harbaugh's. <laughs> yeah, but both Harbaugh's. So, like, that's something. And, look, uh, I think the Harbaugh's have similar mentalities, but one is a little goofy in gym, and then John's a little less goofy. <laughs> I don't think there's many. He's not hard. goofy. Yeah, I've, I've never seen any quotes from uh, John John like we've seen from Jim. Right. It's just different. Like maybe same though mentality, hard nosed, very disciplined, like type of football, but just one's kind of goofy and one's not goofy. And I don't need Mike McDonald to come on to his press conference, uh, whenever his next press conference is, and be like, guys, I had a steak with it, uh, milk today. Like, yeah, Jim, like, I, I don't need, like, you don't need him to fake it and just like be a yeah. different personality. Yeah. Cause we know like authenticity is what sells, right? We do not yeah. need, I mean, we knew Pete Carroll was happy go lucky Pete. Yeah. You know, like we knew that was his personality. He didn't have to fake it. And yeah, it, like, like I don't have to fake being like a hard nose. Like I hate everybody. We're going to break right. kneecaps. Yeah. <laughs> and, and there's another guy, authentic Dan Campbell, uh, Mike McDonald. I just, I, I, I don't want to like harp on it too much, but like, I don't know what his personality is. We don't know. Maybe he is behind the scenes, uh, loose, a little looser, or maybe he is super hard nose. And if he's super hard nose and that's his authentic self, like keep your authentic self. I don't need, any faking i know i've said i would like to see him show some emotion but maybe he's just an emotionless guy i don't know yeah but to that point i mean like let's round it back to the yeah. i guess the main point here is there's definitely and I, and that's it's not arguable at this point it's definitely a organization right now that's telling everyone though that you don't perform well enough you're not staying around or like right. i'm not playing these like oh it's okay like you know, he'll he'll figure it out this year. It's pretty – Jerome Baker, nah, we don't want to – we found a better linebacker in Ernest Jones. We're making the trade. Like, you know, they, they're looking at uh, Terrell Dotson. Mm, not what we really want to go with with the rest of you. Rather develop Tyrese Knight. Done. Yeah. Like, so whatever it is, whether it's – you know, I don't know where, like you said, the personality is inside the, the locker room, but I think it's been – it's become very clear that no matter what, with this organization now moving forward is if you do not perform well enough or if you throw any fits, I don't know, you know, if he did or not, but like if, if there's something that's not right, it's done. And mm. I will bring up an example uh, of a guy we've been talking about DK Metcalf. Mm. You haven't seen the, the BS penalties and the freak outs as much from DK this year. And I'm going to put that on Mike McDonald. I think, yeah. you know, DK DK has been complained about for different reasons this year. Fumbles, and some other things, but not as many freakouts as the last couple of years. Not as many, mm -hmm. you know, crazy penalties for for rip trying to rip a guy's helmet off. And I think that goes to the discipline of this team. That Mike McDonald's like no nonsense. You know, it's not with Pete Carroll is very loosey goosey. Just like oh, be yourself completely. I think Mike McDonald's just straightforward, straight to business, and that can mm -hmm. be good and bad for multiple reasons, like we've mentioned, but. I think DK is a good example of that too. Yeah, absolutely. And it goes to show like there's not a there's not a blueprint to success in how to be a successful head coach. We've seen the loosey goosey coaches like Pete Carroll win Super Bowls. We've seen the really hard nosed coaches like Bill Belichick win Super Bowls. And Mike We've Tomlin. Mike Tomlin win Super Bowls. We've seen Andy Reid, who's kind of like in the middle of both of those, win say, Super Bowls. He's legitimately the most in the middle one of them all. Like He's not happy or mad. Yeah, he just there. wants to eat a burger and have some <laughs> yeah. beer. Um, He's there just so, watching games, coach. So just in general, like, there's no blueprint. It's just, like, more about being your authentic self and making sure that everyone in the locker room is on the same page. That I think that's, like, the biggest thing. Do the players buy into what you're preaching? And Yeah. I, Buy into Dan Campbell, buy into Shanahan, buy into McDonald, buy into Harbaugh. It doesn't matter as long as you get them to buy in. Yeah, and uh, and it's too early to know. Do they buy into Mike McDonald? Yeah, it was just too early to know. And I'm excited. I just feel like we got to do so like we got what the 49ers followed by a the Cardinals, right? Yeah, then the Jets and the Cardinals again. Yeah, like we definitely. Like it is going to be very sad to see us if we had to go one and three in that stretch. Yeah. I mean, we'll get to, get to that in a second, just before we transition is I will say that Mike McDonald 
has talked about very openly that he loves the fight that this team shows, even in the losses. And I've seen that as well. I agree I that think, too. I think the, I think they're bought in, Tim. I think it's a lot of, you see a lot of fight in this team, a lot of not giving up. And that's why we have a lot of these close games. I actually just think there is a, not enough talent at some point, right? Damn, that's why you lose true. games to the, like to the Bills, the way we lost and to the Rams, you know, we got out talented at the end by Matt Stafford and by some other, you know, parts, even though we drove down and tied it, but it may be out coached a little bit, whatever it is. I knew that was coming. The sneeze. Bless you. Um, my, on the pot. Thank you. Uh, you know, what's I'll, weird. I'm sorry, there's a little bit of so a tangent hard. here. Like I've we watch a lot of sports shows, Stephen A. Smith, Colin Cowherd. Um, I don't know. You can name all of them that you want to name. I've never seen one of these people sneeze live on air. Like, do they not have allergies? Do they have like a technique where they can hold a sneeze? I've never seen any of these people sneeze. You know, I'm not I'm not trying to throw shade. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw a little uh I'm gonna throw a little advice for you next time. Yeah, I no, do all the time. No, if I do this and go like this, just start talking. <laughs> Okay, well, but sometimes they're like right in the middle of a sentence. Like I know, but I would have just, I, I, that's why I gave a finger and did this. I, pro I probably, you would have talked over it and it probably would have moved on. True, but I'm just saying, I've never seen anyone sneeze, so I'm just wondering. Well, I, I think TV George has a two or three second pause. They can probably, if somebody did this, mute it for a second. Yeah, probably. Have somebody, the next guy say, I agree, and then keep talking. <laughs> But I think that's what it is. I think it's the del the delay. Um, the cameras move off. We, we don't have the triple camera switch. Like I could have been if we had the producer here, I could have hit one of these. He would have hit mute. Would have moved the camera to your face, and it would have just been ignored. I know. Um, so apologies for that, guys. The producer was not available today. He's a, he's out of town. Just uh, for next 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 time, he knows what to do for next time. But end of the day, it's a. Uh, Wherever I was going was they're bought in. <laughs> they're bought in. They're just not as talented as other teams right now, or maybe not as coached well, which is not a not a shot at Mike McDonald's his first year head coaching. Um, but overall, I feel like they're bought in and I like that. And that that's the transition I want to say towards these next games. I have a short I'm gonna put out on our pages here uh for tomorrow, which is I think the whole season and it sounds stupid because people could say this, you know, at any time, but like our season really does sit on these next two weeks. If mm -hmm. we lose both, there's no NFC West race anymore. We're three, four games back. If we win both, we're first place. And if you split, it's going to really determine on like what's going to happen based on that Jets and Cardinals games. After yes. that. But it, the, the season is, on the line these next two or three weeks and it wouldn't be that case if we didn't lose four out of five we could have, if we won four out of five we could lose the next two and it doesn't even matter we'd yeah. probably still be in first so the whole season is on this line of 49ers and cardinals because we already lost to the 49ers once if you lose both tiebreakers completely gone yeah if you lose both to uh the cardinals and to the 49ers like i said you're three, four games back. Now. Yeah. And, and your division place. record is all of a sudden, zero and three losing to the Rams, 49ers and Cardinals. Yeah. So, and 49ers twice. Yeah. So own four. Yeah. So it'd be over. So My the season sometimes. does. Yeah. I was like, that's four games, buddy. The, the season does lie on these next two games, especially. I mean, yeah, if we win against the 49ers and you could say like it, now, if you lose to the Cardinals, there's still a shot, but can't lose these next two games. And, I guess to get to the the main juice here is the the 49ers George seem like they're kind of coming back. I know they almost lost to the Bucks, but that's a game the 49ers earlier in this year were losing and they're back to winning them with McCaffrey back and kind of getting things, you know, back to the way it was. Debo and, Debo choking trying to choke out play, placeholders on the team. Yeah, it works though if if you're winning games. If they lost, that would be a much bigger deal right now. I know. It's funny. But they won. It is funny. If they lost that game, that would have been like a top story. Since they lost, it's just like a clip. Yeah, like when the Seahawks got in that fight on the sideline, like it was talked about for a day or two through like social media because we lost and mm -hmm. we we were not looking good. When when you win a game, it's like they're hugging it after and it's like, oh, whatever, my bad. Yep. Like good win. All is forgotten and wins. Yeah. But they are coming together as the 49ers again. And that's mm -hmm. 
that's a scary sight for the Seahawks. Yeah, I think they're second in the NFC in odds to make the Super Bowl right now, and that's pretty crazy because this is a team that had a season from that was just doomed from the beginning with all their injuries, and they have been able to overcome it because Brock Purdy's actually developed into a pretty good quarterback. I'm not going to say he's an elite quarterback, but a pretty good quarterback that can get everything done. And then when that happens, um, and when you start getting healthier as the season goes on, you're just going to get good. And post-Thanksgiving is really when – NFL teams make their marks. So the 49ers are scary, but we can be scary too post Thanksgiving. It's uh, we we're still not there yet. I mean, there's still an opportunity for the Seattle Seahawks to make a run. Yeah, there is. Um, but they've been doing the opposite of a run and they're six and a half point underdogs, almost yes. a full touchdown against the 49ers, which we'll talk about here. Also, if you're in Washington, uh, we have an affiliate that you can actually bet in the state of Washington and in 46, I think, other states. It's called the Rebet app. And if you use promo code on tap, on tap, you'll see it on the screen where to do when you sign up or the link in our bio, you will get a deposit match up to 100 bucks. You put $10, which is the minimum, you get $10 free bet. You put 50, you get a $50 free bet. And you can bet on everything like spreads, uh, player props, just like a normal sports book. The only app on your mobile phone that you can bet not a, a casino in washington um and but but six and a half george are you gonna take them yeah i think i'll take the seahawks at six and a half i mean that's this is a divisional game a team that we're used to playing a team that i know it's going to be tough to go win in san francisco but i, I like the six and a half points and um plus i'm a homer so yeah rather root for six and a half and uh you know take that then i'm not going to bet on the 49ers minus six and a half and watch might be excited if i made money we're down if we're down 30 <laughs> exactly I mean, with the divisional game a lot of times i if you know someone's almost a touchdown underdog i kind of like taking the 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 underdog because divisional games are not always stacked up the way of like this team's better than this team. exactly it doesn't always work that way it's going to be hard though. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I am concerned that the 49ers are starting to come into their own again and be the 49ers. This is probably not the time you wanted to face them. I would have loved to face them like two weeks ago again when mm -hmm. they were, you know, not looking or three weeks ago. I know we did early in the season two and lost to them, but that was probably a more comfortable time and we still lost yes. and they are getting uh, better right now. Absolutely. Yeah. Not the best time to face him, but Hey, at least it's two weeks into Christian McCaffrey, not five. Yeah. And, and it's not the best time to face the Cardinals the following week. I mean, the Cardinals are also a team that's been getting better. I mean, was that four straight or wins yeah. for them? So yeah. it's, it's a scary time for the Seahawks if they don't win these games. Cause at that point you're talking about, I mean, if you look at our schedule, it was win, win, win. And then <laughs> it, Loss, 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 win, loss, loss. If we lose both of those, you're talking about whatever that is. I'm not good at math, but what is that? Like seven, seven out of eight straight seven losses. Out of eight, I think uh, I'm just going to trust your math there. It is seven out of eight actually, right. because we lost five out of six. So if we lose two more, it'd be seven out of eight. I'll just trust your math. Seven out of eight. I'm, I counted it now. So I'm good. Uh, it's I'm hoping George, we see the team we saw against the Falcons. That's, our best win on the schedule. Maybe the Broncos is a decent win now on the schedule too. They play uh, each other this week. So we'll decide after the Broncos play the Falcons, whoever wins that game, that will be our best win on so far this season. Yeah. Unless we beat the 49ers. Yeah. Then that's our best win. Yeah. It's, it's a, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I will, I will say this candidly is I'm not that comfortable with this game. Yeah. yeah. Me either. I, I'm not, uh, I'm not too optimistic. Yeah, I was more optimistic going in against the Rams. And, the, you know, the issue, George, we talked about consistency is against the Rams, first half, they made it look like this. Yeah, we, we should be optimistic. And then it was just a lot of nothing until that last drive in the fourth quarter. Right. I know. And hopefully we just uh, to Gino. I love, I'm still on the Geno Smith train. I don't believe that he should be losing his job. I think it's the offensive line, but don't turn over, make don't make bad turnovers this game. Yeah, that was, I mean, main reason we lost to the Rams. I'm not, I'm not going to blame him completely, like offensive line too, but at the end of the day, things fall on the the quarterback's shoulders. Mm -hmm. um, he made some really bad throws. 
in that game. And Some that, people would like to say boneheaded mistakes. Boneheaded. It was boneheaded. I mean, the, he was – there was a couple of them where he could have just thrown it away instead threw it straight to a Rams defender. That's What that does that boneheaded mean? Like, Does that mean like you have no brain and there's only bones inside your head? Yeah, just bones. So, so yeah. no brain. It's actually yeah. like when you say, oh, that's boneheaded, it doesn't sound as mean as the theory. That means like – Like numb schooled, you know, like – I haven't heard that in a long, long time. You numb scold, numb scold. Yeah, like you got your head is numb, bro. It's just 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 a skull. I haven't heard yeah. that in a really long time. It's a, lo- a little dramatic for a for a quarterback making a mistake, but yeah, I know. <laughs> but boneheaded mistake, whatever they call it. No, no, the only way to beat the 49ers is not having those boneheaded mistakes. Defense has to be different I, I don't even know what word to use for them they have to be much better than they've been and i guess we just this is one of those games you you have cross your fingers and hope for the best yeah the key to this game i think sammy is pretty simple like if we score more points at the end of a game and the 49ers have points at the end of a game i think we're gonna come out with a w old joke i can't even <laughs> Most overused joke. <laughs> Most overused joke in sports. I know. It's the truth. It, it is the truth, but overused joke. I it is it's a I think it's actually uh, I was I was trying to make a serious point. Is it's I think it's a turnover battle type of game. Like do you not make mistakes and force them to make make mistakes is the only way it's gonna work out. Because if it's just a clean game, the 49ers are a better team. And yes, that's, that's they are they are a better team right now. Oh boy! Hopefully we get that win. I don't want this season to just go downhill. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to fizzle out. I just give me a chance here, sometime in December, th- that I'm like, all right, we're still in the playoff battle, and every game matters. Yeah, like we're going to that Cardinal Seahawks game in three weeks in Arizona, and it's yeah. You want to go into that game like, hey, a win against the Cardinals means a lot. Like we'd be second in the division or back to first or whatever it is. Not, mm-hmm. not. Uh, if if we win, we're still in last place. You don't want one of those. No, because you go to those games and, or even watch games on TV like that, and it's just like, whatever, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> a win. A win just ruins your draft stock, and you're like, yeah, cool, like, whatever. Yeah, that's the last thing you want. You last thing you want is to be hoping for losses for draft stock, which I don't. The Seahawks haven't really had that type of situation in a while. Well, like 15 years. <laughs> I'm not talking about those seven win seasons. Like, yeah, like I can't think of win. the last time. I mean, I was when we got Russell Kung with the sixth pick, but like, I think the that year was the before last Pete time. Carroll, right? Or the year after Pete year, Carroll came? The first year after Pete Carroll, I think. Yeah. That was the last time we're like, okay, there's no chance to make the playoffs. I hope we tank. That's mm-hmm. crazy. Well, Russell Kuhn, which, by the way, good job with with your investments. Just want to say that. Yeah, I mean, OBJ did that too. He tweeted yesterday. Uh, everyone thought I was stupid for taking my Rams contract in Bitcoin, huh? What are you saying now? <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean, I mean, OBJ, OBJ also good, but like, Okun did like a multiple year contract like that. that I think that Russell was... Kuhn. I'm gonna look it up because that's actually a. But he didn't do that with the Seahawks. He did that with the Panthers, I think. Right? Yeah, it was after the Seahawks. Okay, this was two two days ago. Russell Kuhn's six point five million in Bitcoin salary is now worth twenty million. Nice, yeah, it's good investment. Yeah, I mean that's great. Investment. And he was his own, especially agent, with the inflation. Way. Yeah. Oh yeah, no agent fees. Yeah, all the Bitcoin to himself, and uh, with the inflation, that six million is not really it would have been six million like if it was cash. So I don't understand that, by the way. So like, how's that? Like, okay, a player's like, yeah, I'm taking my salary in Bitcoin. Like, couldn't they just take their salary and buy the Bitcoin? Um, yeah. <laughs> like, or does the team have to buy it and give it to them? Like, how, like, I just don't, I wonder how that works. Like, if I got, like, someone give me 5 million, I went and bought Bitcoin, or do you just, or does the team just give them, like, maybe it changes, like, the, like, how much the team was willing to pay because it's not in, like, cash, or they buy the value of the Bitcoin. Like there is something like let's say the team owner has like the you know thirty million in Bitcoin and it went down like fifteen percent that or went up fifteen percent that week mm. or down and like it changes what he's willing to pay through Bitcoin and like transfer to the dues account, but then it still goes against the salary cap. So 
that would be a nice loophole. It doesn't count towards the salary cap. Start paying like, all right, we're just going to give Mahomes $100 million in Bitcoin. And Shohei Otani should have took his, his contract in Bitcoin. Well, actually, that would have been a bad idea, I feel like, because he wouldn't get it till like 10 years from now and Bitcoin would already be up high. Yeah, but I imagine if they just like put it into an account for him. Like, yeah. yeah. Let it grow and then transfer it to my account in 15 years. <laughs> That'd be smart. Yeah, but solid point, George. If 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 I told you, George, pay me in Bitcoin today, you'll be like, okay, here's a hundred bucks, go buy it. <laughs> Maybe El Kung just didn't want to go through the process of opening his own wallet and buying it and doing all that stuff. So he's like, just buy it for me and give me give me the passcode. I will tell you. Maybe maybe there's a bigger struggle to buy six million of Bitcoin because we've never bought six million dollars of anything. That I don't know if that makes it a longer process. Probably does. Okay, probably does. Probably more more paperwork. Yeah, a little yeah. bit more. It's a, so, a solid point though. I, I actually it was a very good point. I don't know how like why you can't just buy it yourself. But anyways, <laughs> we uh we move forward. Seahawks. Hopefully they get the win. And uh, it's been 30 minutes, so let's log off and uh, hopefully get this win and be back on Monday talking about a Seahawks W. Let's do it. All right. Well, George, you got anything else? Other no, than that's Bitcoin? It, Nothing else. Instead of buying Bitcoin, actually, go to the app. Actually, I would like to also mention that, you know, I, I wish we did this tomorrow. It is Sammy's birthday tomorrow, so happy we'll early birthday. We'll do another birthday, episode bro. tomorrow. How about that? We'll okay, I like down. that. So... Shout out to my early birthday, but we'll do a birthday episode tomorrow, even if it's just talking about the outlook Your birthday. of the whole season. <laughs> yeah, all right, we'll talk about something. We'll we'll find a topic. I say we just talk about your birthday all day tomorrow. Uh, I'll pass. I'll probably be done in like four minutes, bro. All right. Well, fair enough. We'll talk some Seahawks. We'll we'll figure something out for tomorrow. We appreciate you guys. Um, we'll be back tomorrow on my birthday. It looks like so. Uh, shout out to my birthday, I guess. Much love to me. I sound a little conceited, but I enjoy it. It's okay. Um, we'll be back next time. And George, you know what we like to say. Thanks for stopping by. You're listening to the Sports on Tap Seattle podcast. I'm Sammy, and with me as always is my older brother, George. Your favorite place to be a fan of Seattle sports. Now let's get this party 